It's terrifying how they just charge forward, isn't it? Look at that. Just marching on. We kind of need to slow down to take the shot. Because we're just not accurate otherwise. And don't get any closer than that. Remember the city? We paid for it in that city fight. I don't want to make the same mistake again. That Orion might have just... Yep. Distracted by the Annihilator. And the Orion just did a number on us. Hello friends, and welcome back to Hardcore MechWarrior 3, the MechWarrior 3 playthrough that focuses on immersion, storytelling, and showing off the glory of this campaign. It's a wonderful game, full of beautiful little details, and we've been having a great time working our way through. But this is almost the end. Uh, depending on how things go, once we jump into the game, this might very well be the end. We are at Operations Area 4, very close to the finish and it's been an awesome run. We started at Operations Area 1, fought our way through to the Mech Factory, picked up a Lance Mate along the way. Operations Area 2 included some underground areas and our first fight with an Annihilator and we made our way across to Operations Area 3. Now as the story goes this was supposed to be the end. All of the teams were supposed to rendezvous at this spaceport area for extraction but as we know, things did not go to plan at all. Our dropship was shot down. The other half weren't able to deploy, of course. They bailed on their run. So we've been fighting our way through undergunned and outnumbered. But we've made it this far. So we have to press on. We were supposed to be running into a friendly dropship that we were hoping to pick up and take us off planet but they've had to leave us behind, unfortunately. Enemy reinforcements are on the way. Our dropship isn't safe and wasn't able to stay put, so they've had to relocate. So it's now up to us to push on north. So this is where we move to Operations Area 4, and this is not part of the original plan at all. So we don't have any briefings, or we don't have any video briefings, I should say, because there is no information going in. So this is making it up as you go stuff. This is exactly what this campaign is all about. And we know that it's going to be tough. You know it's going to be a real fight from here. This area is approximately where our friendly dropship had previously been waiting and picking up other allied units on the planet. And we know they were having a hard time. They were being pursued and challenged by smoke jaguar forces so that's what we can expect to run into now so it's not going to be easy but we don't have a choice so let's get straight into things um before we do that though did want to say a big thank you to everybody that had been joining me on my live streams that was great fun to get through the campaign to this point in that way uh, unfortunately Real life does get in the way sometimes. So I've had some changes in the real world that have meant that finding the right time and day hasn't been as easy as it was previously. So rather than just waiting and leaving everybody uh, without a conclusion, I thought it best to just jump in when I had a moment here and I'll put together a video. So thank you very much everyone for jumping on board. Sorry that I wasn't able to continue with that schedule. I hope you'll understand, and I hope you'll enjoy. We're coming in from the east. Records salvaged from the Durgan Fortress pinpoint these three communication relays. Taking them out slows down Corbett's response times, but expect them to be well guarded. Records indicate a star of Cauldron Born running the area. The payoff comes from this village to the west at Nav Point Baker. It has a train depot. And a schedule we picked up in the spaceport debris points to a large movement of parts and supplies coming through soon. Don't let it get by. Clear the area of enemy mechs and take out the train after it has dropped its supplies at the depot. Okay, smash and grab mission. 
but with plenty going on at the same time. So Galaxy Commander Brendan Corbett was the clanner that we met on the radio at the end of the last mission. He is now hunting for us, and we need to find a way to avoid him for the time being at least. So that's where these communications relays will come in useful, as well as the supplies that we will hopefully pick up from this train. So now, what have we got to play with? A new mech roster. This is where things get very exciting. We did, of course, salvage a Cauldron Born and a Mad Cat last time out, so we've got options now. We've got plenty of clan heavy mechs that we're going to definitely be making use of. So I'll get us set up with a Lance. Plenty to choose from, plenty of goodies. It's going to be exciting. Let's get it done. All right, here it is. This is the mech roster that we're taking into Operations Area 4. In the MFBs, we have got an Annihilator that we might be saving for later. We've got two Vultures, a Cauldron Born, a Thor, and we're bringing a spare Shadow Cat along as well. But as for the Lance that we're taking, it's got some good stuff in it. I have to take the Mad Cat. You knew this was going to happen. It's just the way of things. Now, this is a slight refit, the uh, Mad Cat that I'm taking today. Slight refit of the Mad Cat Prime, running the same loadout, but I have removed the machine guns and their ammo in place of an extra ton of LRM20 ammo and a second ER small laser. So, going to be hopefully making good use of those LRM20s. Two tons of ammo for that, not enough. But at the same time, we are very much limited by the ammo that we have available. I think this is about it for LRM20 ammo at the moment. And that's also influenced some of our other choices. Dominic Payne is going to be taking a Cauldron Born. Now, the Cauldron Born that he's going to be running is another refit. This is a slightly modified C configuration. The C configuration normally has two LRM15s and two SRM6s paired with two Ultra AC2s. We don't have the auto cannons, so in place of that, we're going to take two large pulse lasers. Once again, pretty limited by our ammunition. That's why we're not using a Vulture at the moment. We just don't have any more LRM20 ammo. And besides, the Vulture doesn't quite have the armor to be running into the forces I expect to face here. Epona Ree is in our second Mad Cat, and she is running an A configuration Mad Cat. Two ERPPCs, three medium pulse lasers, and one Streak SRM6. That is a beautifully balanced loadout with big punch from those PPCs. And Alan is staying put in his Sunder, but we've done a small little change there. He is also running out of ammo options. Uh, still has his prime configuration, which is the medium range, medium close range mech that we've used really well, including that AC20. But we're going to be using alternate configuration A, slight field refit, we don't have uh, an ERPPC or a Gauss rifle in, in a sphere spec, but we did have some spare clan weapons lying around. The Sunder being a Omnimech as well, figure that let's make do with that. So alternate A configuration with a clan spec ERPPC and clan spec Gauss rifle, which then frees up a little bit of extra space for additional ammo for the Gauss rifle. And then the three LRM5s and two medium pulse lasers. So that's the lance that we're taking. Hopefully it's got enough firepower and enough armor because there's a lot that's going to happen here. Now our main objective is to intercept this train which is at Op Baker. I feel like the plan has to be to head that way. Uh, we can't get sidetracked. We will fail the mission if we don't get that job done in time. So I'm hoping that we can make it to that point without taking a major amount of damage. We'll see whether it is worth going and doing at least Op Dog along the way. We'll definitely do Op Charlie, but I'm not sure whether we'll be able to get into Op Dog and then swing back up to Abel once the job is complete. We'll have to just see how it all goes. It's going to be fun. Here we go. How good is the Mad Cat? Look at it down the bottom right. It's just a great looking mech. It's iconic. 
it looks and feels powerful and I tell you it is good to be in a 75 tonner. That uh, Vulture that we used to get through Op 3, it had paper for armour and we flew pretty close to the sun there more than once. It was a bit rough making it through. So um, I think we are going to bypass Op Dog if we can get away with it, having said that. There we have a Bushwhacker and a Shadow Cat. We might be okay, but there's that Corbin Bourne to the north. Um, how is this going to play out? I don't want to get stuck in the middle. I don't want to be ambushed. We might have to take this shot. This might have been a poor choice. Yep. Have to engage. Looking at the map, there's forces ahead, forces behind. One down. We heard them calling for support, and that support being denied. Ooh. We took a big hit. Lost. And lost an arm, so we are maybe in a bit of trouble here. Avatar needs to go down. Ooh, big hit. Everyone at this point has got heavy weapons. One Avatar down, we've got Bushwhacker now. I haven't seen these for a while. But we know they pack a punch, especially that AC-10. Ah, oh, not legged. No, not a good start at all. I'm sick of being legged. Not much we can do about it. All right, first target, Thor C. We'll try and get our lance mates heading on first. Now out of LRM twenty ammo, and once again, Thor C with the Ultra AC twenty. Ooh, that's hurting. We want to take out that Ultra AC-20 arm. I don't want to be getting this close. Oh. targeting. Oh. I called it. I absolutely called it. We haven't really had much trouble with Ultra AC-20s so far in this run. It was bound to happen eventually, but that's what happens when we're legged. Yes, yeah, so what did we learn? We didn't need to rush as much, so maybe... No, I don't want to head north and around. We still... No, actually, yeah, let's, let's take a totally different approach now. We're going to keep the same mechs. Those cauldron borns were up here to the north and they came down. So when we were about here, we had forces from the right, from the left, and directly ahead. We're going to try and separate them. Instead of running straight into the middle, we'll try and pick them off. So we're going to head north, meet the two cauldron borns, continue on, hit the train, and then circle back around. That's the idea, at least. Round two. Careful, we may be able to slip by them. 
Over to you, Lance Vader. Well, I don't think slipping by is on the cards. There's just too much activity, too much going on. We're going to have to take them out, but we might be able to do it on our terms. So we're coming up to the river that leads down to the lake where we met them last time. Targeting. There we go, Cauldron Born. Ooh. So we've got PPCs and LRMs. Good shot with the LRMs. That's what we need. But still, good to see Lance mates on the other. Ooh. They hit hard, these guys. And we lost another torso. Right, well, um... I think overall it's a better start. We're still moving along at 81 kph, but we lost an arm. Lost our left arm. So that. Star Captain Cameron, we are on with the train. We are five kilometers out, target escorting it in. That does limit our long range capabilities. So this is the Thor that got us last time. Thor C, and we know we do not want to be getting close, but we've got got some tanks that have joined us. But hopefully we've still got enough time to deal with the train without it becoming a problem. Another Thor C. So that's two of them. And they're heading towards the train. This could be awkward depending on where they decide to position themselves. But if he comes for us... I don't like them closing the distance on an angle. That's what we wanted. And there's the other one. Stay outside of Ultra AC-20 range. And we should be okay. There it is, and the second. Now when they run on the angle like that, they close the distance whilst being able to avoid the LRMs, which is trouble for us. There we go. And you hear all the clanners wanting a go at us. That should put them down. LRM-20s. That was Star Captain Cameron. Targeting. And here's another C configuration Thor. So this is the third. We cannot, cannot at all get close to them. LRMs are the way. Thank you. And a second. Taking the note. Alright, we need to get a move on. Because now that's the Avatar getting involved as well. And he does have a nasty long range punch. So, it's actually a really good pairing, the two of them. We've got the Thor, which we don't want to get close to. And then the Avatar. 
but then punishes us from range. These are my last... Oh, okay. I was going to say my last LRM, so they have to count, but we're in trouble now. Put this guy down, please. Who's got a Gauss rifle? There's a Gauss rifle over there. Well, he's done. It's a turret. It's a Gauss turret. That is nasty. Where's this train? Oh, man. Put that down, please. Yes, sir. Last thing I want is for us to be losing out to a turret. We just took out the uh, train tracks, so did that do the job? I'm actually a bit unsure what happens now. So hang on, this is the station. Oh, completed! We did it! I didn't even notice. Oh, wow, how's that? We are in much better shape. Kind of. I don't have any, any long range weapons at all. But at least I can move at a reasonable speed. So here's the station. When we destroyed the uh, when we destroyed that turret, that obviously took out the tracks, which then destroyed the train. We're all looking healthy, we're all here, we've still got some towers to take out, so we will see to that. And then be on our way. So we're now on our way to Op Charlie, and we can see on the map targeting. Targeting. we're not going to be alone there. Three enemy targeting. mechs, targeting. Bushwhacker, Shadowcat, and Avatar. Targeting. 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 Worried about that Avatar, Consider it done. and worried about right my away, lack of sure. long range weapons. I've lost both my large lasers, both my medium lasers. And both my LRM-20s. Now, Targeting. these guys, what are they doing? They must be on some sort of a patrol because they're Targeting. moving away Targeting. from us at the moment. Targeting. But I don't Targeting. want... I don't want them to swing around and catch us off guard. Targeting. We're in open space here and... Yep. Right away, sir. I'm if extremely so. conscious of my limited range. But thankfully, targeting. On your six. I was going to say, thankfully, we've still got speed on our side. All right, we took out the tower. All right, we just heard Phoenix Base reporting, saying that they were having issues with communication, which of course, that's exactly what we have been working on. Ooh, trouble. Trying to get my lance mates involved. It's a good thing. Nice, thank you. It is a good thing that avatars run hot because that guy overheating, I think, is really what saved us there. But we're still in it. Targeting. Bushwhacker. And a shadow cat. Right away, sir. And then I think we might be done. It was definitely the right approach to swing north and avoid avoid getting caught in the middle because this is a lot, 
a lot of firepower. Uh, you know what? We might say. On your six. Either way. Dominic, I'm not sure I want you going first because you have the least armor. Stop. But everybody else. Alright, Shadow Cat, A. LRM 15s. No, sorry, large lasers. And the Streak 6. Thankfully, not much armor. But still, a big punch for such a small mech. Oof. No, 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 no. Okay. Attack me up. <laughs> <laughs> That's my mistake for getting out of position. Last one. Nice shot. I now we breathe. Job done. Secondary objectives. Destroy smoke dagger forces. Beautiful. So we made it through, we're intact, and we are right back at the start, ready to head into the next mission. There we go. Well at least now Corby knows we're not just rolling over and giving up. Better than that, we picked up a solid intel on our next few mission areas. We know some of the clan mech deployments and a good possibility for supplies laying right along our path. Things are looking up then. Things are looking up when we find the ticket off Tranquil. Not until. That about sums up the feeling right about now. We've got some of the team trying to stay positive. We've got our, our tactical officer, our MFB guy. Gotta love the MFB guy. He's doing his best to try and get us any advantage that we can find. And we got us another madcap. Excellent. So, up for mission two. All right. We're looking at a pair of madcats and other supernovas and count on at least one Daishi patrolling this next area. That's some heavy metal. That's just what we know for sure. There's bound to be more. This is a simple smash and run. At the River Fork, there's a Jaguar village. Intercepted comms indicate that Galaxy Commander Corbett moved a lot of the mech warriors we dispossessed to this location. Eliminate the village, and we cut into a supply of ready warriors. Near this gorge to the west, we have another laser tower like the one which brought down the Black Hammer. And further to the north, there's an auxiliary supply depot. Burn them down. Blow all bridges in the area. Better to keep things difficult for non-mech traffic. Don't leave us on the other side of the bridge. All clear then. Did you hear that run of expected mechs? That's big trouble. As I said, that's some heavy metal. And the the real standout from that lineup is a Daishi in the area. That is a terrifying thought. But it's also it's also opportunity because I want that Daishi. I want to salvage a Daishi and take that with us into the next area. But such a small small setting like this, you know that means we're going to be hit hard. We've got a big fight ahead. Let's get set up. And we're ready to go for Op 4 Mission 2. Same mix taking advantage of Omnimex and their ability to switch configurations. And we've got some heavy firepower. Of course, still in our Madcat, we've switched from Prime Configuration into Configuration D. Two ERPPCs, four Streak SRM6s. This is a hard hitting build because we think we're gonna need that. Our Cauldron Born, we are using alternate configuration B, 
two RPPCs, two medium pulse lasers, two large pulse lasers. Our second Mad Cat, exactly the same, two RPPCs and four Streak Sixes. And Alan, we have left in his Sunder, of course, switching back to the Prime configuration with a slight field refit rather than the Inner Sphere AC20. He's now carrying a Clan Spec Ultra AC20 with a little bit of extra ammunition as well. The idea here is heavy hitting firepower. We're expecting more of a close range fight. Everything is pretty tightly packed in and we know we're gonna get hit hard from the get go. Fingers crossed that it all works out. Let's go. Reactor online, sensors online, weapons online, all systems online. Linked fire engaged. All right, we're moving to the water. We're gonna need it. This is a very hot environment as well, which doesn't help things. Take out these turrets. Uh, MFBs, there's nowhere else that they really can go, is there? So that's fine. But here is our objective. You hear them calling it out, Mad Cat, Champion. I feel like we kind of just need to hold our ground. Here's the champion, first one. This is Star Colonel Katari. Single fire reinforcements from Green Fire Sage. And you hear them calling for reinforcements. Targeting. There's another mad cat. So Targeting. we're on. This champion is going for our field bases, which is Missile not what we want. Shifted. This is a hot, hot, hot build. Very hot. Champion down. Now this mag cat needs to go. There he is. Oh, and another. I missed that guy. I would have been... I would have been a bit more careful with my heat if I knew he was coming. Job done. Annihilator. What do we know about Annihilators? We know that we can't get close. So we're in his range. Those streaks are a really big help, but we need to hit him hard. Good. He's done. Annihilator down. All right, that's the first hurdle out of the way. The positioning of our MFBs is really sketchy there. Another champion. I want to get in the water, but we've got to make do with what we've got. Enemy approaching. Supernova. So interesting, all these strategies that come into play where they are trying to draw us in. Now that we're in the water, I feel a lot better. But still, there's a lot happening. Right, come on. We kind of need to stay here to control our heat, but... And in the background, we can hear our lance mates destroying the objective buildings, which I wish they wouldn't do, but this is how it works. All right, where's that supernova? Targeting. Two supernovas, that's the call. Target. 
on the guys. We need to not focus on the objectives. We need to focus on okay. this guy. Right, we just lost a PPC. Which could be trouble. One supernova down. Another supernova. And Daishi, there he is. Daishi B configuration. Which means PPCs. That is a terrifying mech. I should not be standing there like that. We need to get a move on and put some range between him and us. Well, less range, but more about the terrain. Especially when that supernova is there. Unfortunately, we didn't get to hear a lot of that, but there's disorder in the clan ranks. They're not happy. But this Daishi needs to drop. I want to salvage him. So we might try and soften him up a bit, but this is dangerous. We're playing a dangerous game, getting close. But I want it. So we'll try for a leg and see what happens. Oof. Come on. Yes, that's what we're doing. Get it, get it, get it, get it. Oh, he's still... Yes. Oh boy, alright. So Daishi down. <laughs> now let's hope we have the salvage luck. Back to the village, and then we can move on. That was lucky. Was worried when we lost that PPC, but fortunately it was just an arm and not a torso as well. That was just chaos, wasn't it? What was the count? Two supernovas, an annihilator, two mad cats, two champions, and the dire wolf. The Daishi, I should say. Wow. Glad to make it through on the first go, however. Also, our first use of PPCs this run. Come on, guys, now's the point where you can take out the objectives. Thank you. Help us out. PPCs in this game are extremely powerful, but they are balanced by slow recharge and the recoil that throws your aim off, and also needing to lead them. They are a projectile weapon. So you need to lead your shots. Come on, let's finish this and get out of here. Mission successful. There it is. So the village is done. The laser tower was taken out and as we look at the map we can see we're heading north we heard about reinforcements coming from Phoenix base no prizes for guessing where we're going next missing one pair of supernovas I sure didn't miss them two stars is enough thanks the supernovas were obviously rotated north probably replaced by the pair of champions count on seeing them in the next mission area there are also more Daishis around somewhere. We could sure use an atlas about now. Love that call. We sure could use an atlas. Yes, indeed. But we did get our Daishi. I am stoked about that.
because that will come into play in the very near future. On we go. We're moving along, but the retreating rescue company is winning the race. Captain Taylor reports that they are already staggering in by singles and pairs. Anyway, they can walk a little slower? Taylor won't leave without giving us every chance. I won't deny that we need a bit of luck. Now, as you can see by our satellite enlargement, we'll be coming in at the southern edge. Expect things to heat up quickly. Unless we have more shuffling, we should find a pair of supernovas, some vultures, and a few Orions at the least. Where they've been set is anyone's guess. They'll expect a heavy force sitting at the large supply base at this op point. At that supply base is our main concern. We want to capture it for supplies. So take out any and all enemy mechs guarding that facility without causing it too much damage. There's a bridge just south of the base and another as part of an auxiliary post to the west. If we run into too much trouble, bring the bridges down to buy time. While we're on the north side of the river or the south? I guess that depends on where we find enemy mechs, wouldn't it? Yeah, point. There is a village to the east, but all indications are that it houses laborer caste, so it's low priority. But below the lake, there's a structure that we're not sure what to make of. Recon and capture the facilities you find there. We'll make the call on destroying it once it's in our possession. Sounds simple enough, right? Move it on upriver. Just attack another base. We've done enough of that. Well, we haven't done enough of that already, apparently. But once again, that is a heavy list of enemy forces. We're going to be walking straight into it and carrying, feeling like a very similar setup to what we had last time out. Here we are, ready for our attack on Phoenix Base. Slight change to our loadouts, somewhat necessitated by ammo concerns, but also just about trying to pick the right tool for the job. With our Madcat, we're now back in the A configuration, sticking with two ERPPCs, but swapping three of those Streak SRM6s for three medium pulse lasers, and also it carries a lot more heat sinks, so that might make it a bit more usable for us compared to the really toasty D configuration. Going back to that C configuration Cauldron Born, or the refit version I should say, for Dominic, large pulse, two SRM6, two LRM15s. I feel like the LRM15s are going to be useful. We're basically out of LRM20 ammo, so LRM fire support is pretty hard to come by at this point in the game. Uh, we will change opponent over to an alternate A Madcat as well. It's just too hot for this environment, but we'll see if the D configuration comes back later. And Alan, we've moved back into alt configuration A refit once again. So the clan spec ERPPC and Gauss rifle paired with three LRM5 and two medium pulse laser. His refit prime configuration with the Ultra AC20 worked really well, but we're now basically out of Ultra AC20 ammo, so a change kind of necessitated by our ammo situations, but perhaps the longer range here might come in useful. This is actually a pretty useful all around mech, just looking at the loadout, so hopefully it serves us well. So here's the plan. We need to head north to Op Able, take out the base, plenty of turrets along the way, then continue along the river to Op Baker. We have bridges, so we can kind of pick what side of the river we want to be on. I think we're going to stay on the same side. I don't want to move into the middle and then be attacked from multiple directions. So we will just play methodically, work our way north on the side that we are on, and see what we, want, see what we run into as we go. Hopefully we get through all right. Let's do it. Reactor online. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems nominal. I do not want to hear excuses. I want those Strava free birth exterminated. Do you hear me, Trace Katari? Or you would rather join Ratashosis in obscurity? Quineg? Neg, Galaxy Commander. Neg. It will be done. I'll say one thing for Corbett. He can motivate his officers. Yep, I have nothing to add to that. Corbett is an excellent character in this game and performed 
really, really well. Uh, now, he was talking to Trace Katari, who we actually heard first uh, two missions ago when we were attacking the train. He appears to be the commander of Phoenix Base and was in control of sending reinforcements uh, down to... Well, he was reporting a loss of communication when we were attacking those comms towers and then also sent reinforcements to our previous fight. Now just checking my range on these PPCs because our rangefinder is only 800 meters. I think the PPCs are 900. We don't need to be taking any unnecessary damage. There we go. 900 meters range. Single fire engaged. Group fire engaged. For the ER PPCs. So yes, Phoenix base up ahead. We'll talk about that as we get to it. But here we go. We have two vultures. Alternate C, twin Gauss rifles. Right, so... Group fire engaged. Twin Gauss rifles are trouble. But I am a little more concerned about the A configuration, which we used in a previous mission. Six SRM6. So that guy's done. But this, this guy needs to drop. I think we're getting too close. Ooh, hard hits. Come on. Alright. What's happening? Orion! They were hitting us from multiple directions. And that was the call from Trace Katari. Telling his forces how to attack. I love that kind of detail. Nope, I didn't mean to shut down there. I didn't want to. I see another Orion in the distance. We need to get this guy down first. Those PPC shots are not the easiest thing to land. Much easier when they're standing still though. They're still tough, Orions. We met the first one in Operation 1 and they're still here and they're still putting up a challenge. But that seems like the first hurdle cleared. We're all still here. So we push on towards the base. Now, Phoenix base, we need to talk about that. The Phoenix rises from the ashes. And that is what Galaxy Commander Brendan Corbett is intending to do with Clan Smoke Jaguar at this point in time. The Smoke Jaguars were beaten. They were beaten with the Star League fight back that took place right before our mission. Alright, ground units moving forward. We see a couple of strikers on radar. There are some turrets Targeting. that I can't quite get, and we have another supernova. So we said that we were going to be meeting a couple of them. I don't know if we can land our shots. But we'll have to see what happens. And there's mechs across the river. What have we got? Annihilator. Alright, let's pull back. Annihilator and Orion. Um Oops. Need to watch where I'm going. We're going to pull back because I don't... Let's watch where we're going. Please. Uh, I don't want to get caught. I shouldn't have done that. I 
That's my fault for not paying attention. Let's cross over now because that Annihilator and Orion were in the middle. Let's deal with these guys and then we'll make our way to the base. But yes, what I was saying, the Smoke Jaguar, the clan itself at this point is basically dead. And Brandon Corbett has come to this planet, come to Planet Tranquil, to rally any remaining loyal forces to him. The previous clan, Lincoln, uh, previous car, Lincolnosis, is dead. So they don't have a leader anymore. Brendan Corbett is the highest ranking official that they have. So he wants to rebuild Clan Smoke Jaguar. Like a phoenix right from the ashes. Side. So that is what this base is all about. Targeting. So Annihilator. It's terrifying how they just charge forward, isn't it? Look at that. Just marching on. We kind of need to slow down to take the shot. Because we're just not accurate otherwise. And don't get any closer than that. Remember the city? We paid for it in that city fight. I don't want to make the same mistake again. That Orion might have just... Yep. Distracted by the Annihilator. And the Orion just did a number on us. Isn't it funny how that works out? Focusing on what we thought was the real threat. Only to get blindsided by his support. Job done. Right, so I am glad that we got to face that Annihilator here rather than having him come across to us in this fight that we are presumably coming up to. So we need to push on, we need to get closer to the base. We can see forces across the river, but we don't really have the right angle. Now there was a supernova. Two supernovas. Now this is trouble because we are in their range and I have a single PPC. Look at their positioning, that's uh... Well, they're right, the fight has started and um, we're in a bad, bad spot but I don't really know if we have another choice. The way that they're just up there Supernova, Supernova, of course, six, six ER large lasers. They've got the range on just about anything. And I don't know if this is the best plan, but But we had to get close. There was just no way we could sit there trading with a pair of supernovas at that range. At their range. Oh no. Legged again. Come on. Alright, he's down. But we're not out of the woods. We have lost the star captain. Phoenix base requires immediate relief. One in a million shot. One more on the way. I love the way that they respond. Primary objective complete. 
What's shooting at us? There just is no break, is there? But we don't have a choice. Waiting for this helicopter to come back around and then we'll deal with him. Our lance mates are just set on destroying this base. Which again is another really cool piece of piece of design that Supply Depot, but uh, But it doesn't phase them. They want to see it down. Here we go. One. Two. Now that's a actually a really good display about pulse lasers in this game. Pulse lasers in MechWarrior 3 function in a totally different way to any other MechWarrior title. Rather than being a rapid fire laser. The beam holds its duration. And I really like this. Because in the law, pulse lasers. That's very noisy. I was saying I really like it like this because in the law, pulse lasers are described as being more accurate. Now, a laser is a beam of light. You can't really make that. How do you make a beam of light more accurate? There's not really such a thing as more or less accurate. But where the pulse lasers in this game do have that effect is allowing you to adjust your aim like we did with those helicopters. So that call, we can't really see it because we're a bit far away, but there's a shuttle on a landing pad. That is what we want to capture. That is our way home. But here we go, elementals. And annihilator. So this is another opportunity to show How the pulse lasers have the effect of being more accurate. Elementals are a pain, but when you can adjust your targeting, like so, it has the effect of being more accurate. Uh, now that annihilator. It's getting close. Come on, guys. Here we are again, face to face with an annihilator. And he's down. Now the other. Oh no, he's turned on us. We're in trouble. I cannot take a shot. Someone's down. I don't know who we just lost, but we lost someone. I think it was Dominic in the Cauldron Born. Mission successful. Oh boy. So, we lost a Cauldron Born, but we survived the mission. Now that there is a shuttle landing pad. There's no shuttle on it. We missed it. But over here is something very cool. I'll uh, hobble on over and show you. So we said that this was Phoenix Space, but Galaxy Commander Corbett was trying to Revive Clan Smoke Jaguar. This is such a clan. Such a such a big part of doing that to a clan. Here we are. Lasering out of the side of a mountain. The clan Smoke Jaguar. 
logo. And it's so cool that they did this. But they've got this little gantry rigged up and what is presumably a laser cutter cutting it out of the rock. Love that, so good. As I've been pointing out with this playthrough, one of the coolest things about MechWarrior 3 is the way that all of the mission areas connect together. And Op Operation 4 Mission 3 into Op 4 Mission 4 is actually no different, although it's not as easy to pick at first. You might have played this game and wondered how we get from this hot, lightning-stricken landscape into the snow that we're heading to next and I used to wonder that as well but it's actually over here so here is Op Baker this was our final objective and there's a little pathway that opens up this way back around the corner is where that smoke jaguar emblem was being forged in the mountain and over here is an open path here we are now from the top of that pass looking down we can see the base off in the distance and then around behind us, snow. It's a little weird with the same crimson sky overhead, but that's the snow. This is where we are, of course, heading next. But we made it. What? What an ordeal. We barely made it. There's no armor on this mech at all. Oh, so good. Damocles Commando, this is Captain Taylor. Brendan Corbett caught the last two mechs we've been waiting on. Butchered them. We're safe enough for now. No mech is about to charge a dropship, but time is running out. On the chance you can snag that shuttle or perform a miracle and get over the mountain in time, I'll hold on to the last possible moment. But whether you're here or not, we'll clear Tranquil before the incoming smoke jaguars get in our way. I'm sorry, but that's the way it has to be. If it comes to that, dig a deep hole and hide yourselves in it. I'm sure we'll be back for you. I'll dig him a hole. Dig it and throw it. Let's not make it any harder than it already is, all right, Gunner? Brutal. Just brutal. But that is the reality of a situation like this. The reality of war. The reality of this kind of conflict. When you go on a commando mission, you know that you could be cut off. And that is what we are very close to being. So we made it through the first three missions of Operation 4, and there are now three more to go. This is now a race to the end, basically. We're trying to reach our second dropship, the Eclipse. Brendan Corbett is trying his best to prevent that from happening. He's already done horrible things to some of our allies. And all the while this is happening, there is enemy forces on their way to the planet. And if they reach us, or if they reach the planet before we reach our dropship, then we know we are done for. High stakes. But that's the way we like it. And I love the way that it conveys this situation. So we'll come back for the last three missions of Operation 4 in our next attempt, in our next video. We'll be back to something a little bit more regular. So hopefully it won't be as big of a wait, although I do really appreciate your patience and understanding. Really appreciate everyone that watches, comments, and that has chatted along with me. It's been great, and I'm looking forward to the next one. So until then, thank you very much for watching. Once again, bye for now.